blossoms flowered May the snows upon a winter night Was born the child, the Christmas rose The King of love and light The angels sang, the shepherds sang The grateful world rejoice And that is pleasant for the stars That exaltation blows Oh, come let us Again the heart with rapture glows To greet the holy night That gave the world its Christmas rose Its king of love and light Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the Nativity of the Lord. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices and let's stand and take a moment to greet one another. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1102 in your hymnal, 
and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app or click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Our gathering song is number 521, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 521. gather on this most sacred night to celebrate the birth of our Savior. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with each of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this Christmas Eve, we celebrate the mystery of God coming among us as human. Let us remember and acclaim God's great mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth is to people of sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people who make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder, Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Oh, the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the same. And the sound of the horn raise a shout before the King, the Lord. Oh, the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Oh, the ends of the earth have seen the saving power. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you news of great joy, joy for all nations, for today is born our Savior Christ the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town, And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, this evening I'm going to give you a a choice. I can offer a very extensive, in depth theological explanation of the doctrine of the Incarnation, or I can share a story. Which one? Story? Story? Okay, good. Because I didn't bring my theological notes with me. Wonderful choice. There are many stories told surrounding the birth of Jesus, and not all of them are recorded in Scripture. This is the story of Jonathan, a young boy of seven or eight. It's a sad story. It's a joyful story. Mostly, it's a story of hope. Jonathan and his parents were Samaritans, people despised by the Jews as heretics. His father died shortly after he was born, and his mother moved to the anonymous slums of Jerusalem and turned to the only work available to her, prostitution. People who passed her on the street spat at her for being a Samaritan or took advantage of her as a harlot. They treated Jonathan the same way. One day, his mother was caught in the very act of adultery. She was judged by the Mosaic law and stoned to death. Jonathan was left all alone to fend for himself. Now, in those days, the government didn't take in abandoned children and care for them. And after all, this, mother, this child's mother was an adulteress, and Jonathan himself was a Samaritan. So they left him to live like a dog on the streets. During the summer months, Jonathan lived by his wits and became streetwise. He survived by stealing food, rummaging through garbage, picking pockets, living in abandoned buildings. 
But when winter came, he could no longer sleep in the alleys or deserted ruins. He feared the Roman soldiers around the temple district. And so he wandered out of the city toward the village of Bethlehem. But all day, he could find no food to steal, no shelter from the cold. The villagers threw sticks and stones at him and called him names. He was hungry, lonely, broken-hearted. On the edge of Bethlehem, he found a shed built into the rocks. When no one was looking, he squeezed open the door, snuck into the shed, and buried himself in the hay in a lowly corner. There, he cried himself to sleep. But he was awakened when new arrivals pulled open the stable door. He listened to a man and woman talking. Jonathan, even at his young age, had seen many of the facts of life, and he recognized what was about to happen. He heard the man sweeping aside dung on the stable floor. He heard the woman's labored breathing. And then for a reason he did not understand, Jonathan dug himself out of the hay and stepped forward toward the young couple. He was expecting he might be kicked out, but instead they smiled at him with warmth, the first smile he had experienced since his mother died. Jonathan summoned his courage and asked, Is there anything I can do to help? The man replied, Yes, thank you. Will you take this bucket to the village well, wash it out, and return it to us full? Three times to the well the boy went, and when he returned the third time, the man's face was beaming with joy as he said, Come over here. Look. He followed the man over to where the woman was lying next to a manger of straw. And there he saw a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Quite instinctively, he knelt and extended his hand toward the manger. The baby's tiny hand reached out and grasped one of his fingers. At once, Jonathan felt a change happen within him. He felt that someone cared, that he was not alone anymore. And throughout his senses and in his heart, he heard music. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to all. And as the baby clung to his finger, Jonathan poured out his story to the young couple. They listened to him and shared bread and cheese with him. When the shepherds threw open the stable door and came in, Jonathan stepped aside and watched as one by one they knelt before the baby lying in the straw. He smiled and and laughed as the shepherd children wrestled with a young lamb brought as a gift. He watched every move the baby's father made. He saw him beckon an older shepherd couple and engage in discussion with them, all glancing at Jonathan. Then the shepherds stepped over to Jonathan and extended an open hand. At first, old fear and bitterness caused Jonathan to shrink back. But the shepherd spoke softly to him. Do not be afraid. Please, come with us. My wife and I have a simple cut, but our children are grown and gone. We would like you to live with us. Then he took the little boy's hand. As the shepherds filed out of the stable, Jonathan went with them, fondly looking back at the young couple and their child. Jonathan grew up in the shepherd's household where he was treated with love and respect. When he was grown, he left the shepherd's family. He began a trading business in the cities. He traveled often between the cities of the region, but whenever he passed near Bethlehem, he visited the shepherd and his wife. He helped make their lives comfortable as they grew old. Jonathan was always thoughtful and helpful to those in need. Once on a trading trip to Jericho, he came upon a man who had been robbed and beaten and lay half dead by the side of the road. Jonathan stopped, but that's a story for another day. Many other such stories have been told. 
The stories are still being told in our times by you and me. The stories are told when, like the shepherds on that night so many years ago, we see Jesus and we believe. We profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of joy and gladness, let us lift our prayers. As we celebrate the festival of Christmas, May church leaders everywhere be renewed in body and spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring harmony where there is strife between nations and where people are divided by suspicion and bitterness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be celebrating Christmas for the first time since the death of a loved one, especially the loss of a child, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for children. May our example of love lead them to the love of God who sent his son as a little child, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of those who have become hardened to the feelings, hurts, and needs of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy on refugees who have been torn from their homelands to seek new lands, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know comfort and healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they will come to the fullness of life in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the Singleton family and all the intentions we hold in prayer for silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wonder, hear the prayer of your people gathered to celebrate the birth of your son. Help us to share the gift of the Prince of Peace with all people. We pray this in his name, Emmanuel who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we begin to take up our, uh, our collection. Uh, we want to thank you for your generosity. And uh, if we have a few more people to help with that collection, that would be very helpful. You can meet back there to, to help uh, organize that. So.
My sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in Jesus God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
We pray then as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but at the great faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 527, Silent Night, hymn number 527. Christ. Mm-hmm. 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Silent night, holy night. Body of Christ. God bless you.
Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Well, my annual Christmas gift always to whatever congregation I'm in front of is there are no announcements tonight <laughs> other, other than to wish you all uh, a very merry uh, Christmas and season greetings over the next few days. Let us stand for God's blessing. And to each of these uh, blessings, uh, please uh, respond, uh, Amen. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced by to shepherds by an angel, fill our minds with the gladness he gives and make us heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill us with the gift of this peace and favor us and make us sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our lit, lit Mass is now completed, and let us go forth to announce the birth of our Savior to the world. Thanks be to God. The recessional song is number 520, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 520.
Thank you so much. Thank so you. Like, oh, darn it. No, no you should have been, been here for 4 o'clock. I had the cutest little kid come up here. She was so cute. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't know she was going to cry. She was yeah. She was like, almost, I was like, just come up here. Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, well, now that I know you. Now I know you're gonna sound great, and I I won't screw you up with the. <laughs> no no no! I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> but now you know you can. Do yeah, you can do it. Just so you know, I just have to walk on my ranch. Like I'm kind of very like sea middle sea kind of. You're singing fun. You stop it. I'm just on my. Now I just need to walk on my ranch. Yeah. Whenever it gets high, I get nervous. I'm like, I'm not gonna hit it. Yeah. And I, I forget to breathe. Mama, I, the breathing. That's it. I knew it. That's it. Would you give me classes? <laughs> I uh, walk on that, but thank you. This was this was fun. All right, guys. All right. Merry Christmas. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Well, I'll come at 11. Wait, what are the classes? Yes. Okay, because 11, like, we do need, like, Eucharistic minister help. Okay, I guess um, we have to probably do I don't even know if I have a lecture. Do you want to read? For what time? Oh, wait, no, 11, I do. We do have a lecture. We do have lectures. It's 8 and 11? 8.30 and 11. So I, uh, and 8.30 is pretty covered. If you're here at 11, I might be like, hey, can you help us? Yeah, yeah. I can do, I can do 11. Cool. We'll see if I'm up at 8.30. Yeah, I think 8.30 Okay. I could do 11. Go that's forward. sounds but, uh, good. But yeah. You know what they bring me? That can go back to the Okay. Yep. Okay, I'll probably be here at 11. 8 30 is a little. No, you're good. <laughs> Get my nice workout in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you want to shout at yourself? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ